In order to connect a machine structure PLC from Schneider Electric Modicon to a ProFace HMI, you would in the GP Pro EX software select Device PLC from Peripheral Settings, Add a Device, and then you would select one of two things, Schneider Electric here, or you would select Codasys. In my case, I'm going to select Schneider to start. Codasys is the preferred method due to the tag database that you can access. So if I select Schneider Electric, I'm going to select TCP Master, say OK. And here I'm going to give it a name. And now I'm going to type in the IP address of the PLC, which is 103. And I'm going to say OK. And that's pretty much it. I would leave the default settings here to start. Now you can go to the screen list, and if you add a switch, what, what you'll see is that you can access that node, Schneider, the device PLC being Schneider, and then you can access the 0, 1, 3, and 4 registers. So as a switch, I'm going to write to 0, 1. And uh, we can see that on the Schneider side using the Sew Machine software. I have Sew Machine version 4.1, Service Pack 2. I have a very simple program. This, since this is an M251, I'm utilizing remote I.O. over a Woggle unit. And that's connected over Modbus TCP and I have that sent over the device network using I.O. scanning. But to start, let's take a look at the HMI and how that's configured. The HMI is configured as a node in this example as a, as a master off of this slave device that I configure from Ethernet 1. And I, uh, I would right click here and add the slave device. You can also use the built-in uh, Modbus TCP connection which is enabled by default. If I click on Ethernet 1, you can see the Modbus server is active. However, when you add a slave device here, it overrides that. You're not going to have access to the same registers. It, it basically, it's one or the other. Now, uh, with this, the fixed IP address is 1.103 and 1.100. So I'm pointing to the HMI, which is 1.100. I leave this as 247. And this is a little bit limiting, so if you use the built-in one, you have a lot more holding registers and input registers to share over Modbus TCP. But the important part here is that I'm sending an output, and here we have our outputs, the output from the output channel, and I'm sending the first one bit 0, QX0.0 .0 over to the HMI. So I can take a look here in my program. If I go to POU, I'm sending the QX0.0 .0 to the HMI. Now for the Modbus I.O. scanner on Ethernet 2, I have uh, an IP address of 2.100. And in addition to that, I've added the I.O. scanner. And in order to do that, I right clicked, I added an industrial Ethernet manager, selected Modbus TCP. Then for the network manager, I set it as fixed. And I'm pointing to the fixed IP address of the Wago Island. And on that, if I open up those settings here, you can see 2.101. The important part here is the I.O. mapping. It's an input coming in to channel 0 at word IW15, which is Boolean value IX30.0. And over here, IX30.0. Now, all of this is hard-coded. The second example I'm going to show you is using the tag database over Codasys. For the Codasys setup to share the XML file, I have given it a name of Codasys. And uh, if I select this, I can input its node name or I can access over its IP address. I'm using the node name and I found that in the Sew Machine software. If you go to my controller, when you're connected, you can copy and paste the node name out of here and uh, bring that into the ProFace software. Once you've done that, you would select Use Tag Data and then you grab your tag database. Now I'm just going to show you an example. I'm going to pretend like I'm creating another one. Import, browse. I'm going to bring in uh, this tag database here. And you can see the va variables that are available. And these have been shared inside of the Sew Machine software as global variables. So I have created a Wago PB variable and an HMI lamp. Now both of these have to be shared over a symbol configuration. We're going to go to Build, Generate Code. And here it's generating code, you can see down here. And now we'll go and check again. And there we go, we have our XML file. So that is the file that gets brought in from ProFace. So here it is, HML, HMI LAMP and WAGO PB. 
and I say OK. It successfully imports it, and I say OK. What this does is it makes it very easy and convenient to configure devices on your screen. So for example, in addition to the one I showed you before, I have HMI lamp. I can go and grab from the tag database HMI lamp. Now on the Schneider side, it's important to note some of the settings. Uh, I'll jump over here to Ethernet 1. This is using the Modbus server uh, out of the box as active and in order to leverage that, uh, you have to declare them in, in the variable declaration, in your variable de declarations. And that's done by this HMI lamp at QX0. I'm sending it as an input QX0.0. .0. Now, the declarations look like this. This is an example of how you would declare variables. Now, once you declare that, that variable, you still need to share it, and that's again through the symbol information. So the Woggle PB here uh, is on the Ethernet 2, which is the I.O. scanner, and you can see on Ethernet 2 I have it pointing to the Woggle. Uh, actually, this is the PLC itself, and then in the in Industrial Ethernet Manager, select Modbus TCP, and then I select Fixed, and I point it to 101 and 101 is the Woggle Island inside of here IO mapping here I have assigned the Woggle PB to bit 0 as the input coming in so the input comes in through the structured text program and gets written to the HMI it's the HMI lamp and that concludes the demonstration on how to set up SoMachine and GP Pro EX